All right, good afternoon, and thanks for clicking on to the Wednesday edition of Hogan's European Outlook. It is hump day. Why am I showing you a video of Alex Deacon and yesterday's deep dive? Well, I certainly would encourage you to check out yesterday's video if you're interested in a little bit more detail with regards to learning about meteorology and indeed the jet stream in particular. We are going to see an unseasonably area, uh, an unseasonably deep area of low pressure. This upcoming weekend across British Isles, we did see some in 2012 during July. We also seen it in 2015. Those have been somewhat of an analogue year to the current summer, of course, here on MarvelGunWeather.com. But I would encourage you to check out this in-depth discussion that the Met Office produce on a, a Tuesday. Every Tuesday they do this. And I would greatly encourage you to do that if you would like to know a little bit more about some very a complex dynamics with regards to the jet stream and uh, and of course the upcoming weekend now i do encourage you to check out other channels from time to time um because i as you know i do not claim to know everything uh, in fact um i'm only giving you the interpretation of the knowledge that i have myself but we do have a polar opposite pattern now versus what we had of course in june many people portray in july as being a very cool month but in actual fact it isn't actually that cool at all it is marginally above average the first five days or so has been cooler than average but we are slowly going back above average and a lot of the contributing factor to that folks is the amount of warmth that we have in our ocean surrounding the british isles in ireland of course the north sea to the east and the ocean the atlantic ocean of course to the west those very warm waters are likely adding heat to the atmosphere and therefore increasing humidity level and with an increase in humidity level the temperatures particularly by nighttime do not come down that much so of course that could be skewing the, the temperatures uh, overall for the kind of the average the mean temperature overall when you've got warm nights but generally average even marginally below average temperatures during the daytime so i think we will wind up above average temperature wise across the uk for the month of july but it is turning out to be quite a wet month indeed and like i've said before there is hints that with a Manjulian oscillation progressing from the Indian Ocean through the continental maritime and into the West Pacific, we may get a little bit of a ripple effect shift in the upper pattern through the middle latitudes, and we may start to see high pressure trying to build back into the UK, settling things down and warming things up. But according to the latest run of the GFS anyway, that isn't really going to happen uh, to, you know, till at least the very end of the month. So it will be a low pressure dominated pattern. It will be close, if not slightly above average temperature wise. And it will also be, I believe, a wetter than average July overall. So all said and done, I think the July forecast has proved quite nicely uh, in an accurate way. So the upcoming five days, this is what it looks like. We've got a trough firmly in control of our weather pattern. Of course, strong ridge at high pressure sent over the central and southern portion of europe therefore we're seeing plenty of heat across this region of the world uh the six to ten day that trough isn't going anywhere anytime soon as you can see here and even out to the 11 to 15 which takes us to the 27th of the month the negative remains in control which is quite interesting so of course we've shaved off a good at least half a degree of the the, uh, the the sea surface temperature anomaly of the North Atlantic. So this is the weekly change. This is off the CDAS data, and this is off tropicaltidbits.com. I do hope to have a video, possibly as early as tonight, by the way, uh, a brief video at that about looking at the websites that I use for these videos. So basically where I find my data with the models, etc. that I show you, I want to show you exactly where those uh, charts come from so i will try to do a video tonight if not over the next night or two with regards to that there so it can give you a better idea in terms of where i'm getting my models from 
and my information from, of course. But this is off, like I say, the CDAS data, tropical tidbits. You can see here the weekly change in the sea surface temperature profile. Now, one thing I want to note, uh, note here is you notice the warming starting to take place over the northwest Atlantic and also just to the south of Greenland. Why would that be the case? We're then displacing the cooling of the last seven days a little bit further south. Remember about uh, you know five, six, seven days ago, we had some very notable cooling to the west of the UK and Ireland. We're starting to peel away from that level of cooling, so to speak, because of the upper air pattern. You know, in the month of June, we had strong troughiness, a positive uh, North Atlantic oscillation that kept Greenland's surface mass budget continuing to rise. We had snowfall, we had cold temperatures. Now, all of a sudden, we've seen, of course, that shift that likely could be attributed to the Manjulian oscillation and other factors that forcing around the planet, including the developing El Nino, even though the brakes have been put on with the development of this El Nino, we will start to see that increase, I think, in the coming week, week or so. But uh, the reason for this upper air pattern shift is likely attributed to tropical forcings in the equatorial region of the planet and the shift from positive NAO to negative NAO. So, of course, when you've got that negative NAO, you see a, a quite a significant shift in the upper air pattern. So, of course, we had the positive over the UK, high and dry for the UK, northern Europe, cool, wet across more southern portions. We have flipped that pattern on its head now, and of course we're seeing the shift in terms of Greenland seeing warmer temperatures, and we're also seeing warming of the oceans surrounding Greenland as well. But I think the feedback of this warmer than average sea surface temperature around the UK and Ireland, we are seeing that respond to the atmosphere with heights coming down that want for the atmosphere to rise cool, condense, produce clouds, produce rainfall. And that is exactly what we're seeing. The golden question is when, if that is, we see that shift during the month of July. Now, the Manjulian Oscillation, like I say, the enhanced phase is looking likely to progress uh, eastwards into the Pacific Ocean. And then what in turn does that have an impact um, on the atmosphere Overall, so you can see here, this is off um, the North Atlantic sea surface temperature profile here. So this is the sea surface temperature anomalies. And of course, back during the end of June, we had uh, an anomaly for the entire, this is incorporating the whole North Atlantic, by the way, we had an, uh, a temperature average over a full one Celsius above the, the, the average here. Then we've seen this drop off as the upper pattern shifted from high pressure to low pressure over the UK and surrounding the UK. Therefore, we increase the wind blowing over that ocean surface, upwells colder water from deep below to the surface. But of course, water temperatures are still warmer than average. So of course, we need to remember that also. But you can see here that it's kind of leveled off that cooling, but we're still a good full half a degree above the seasonal norm for this time of the year. So how are we looking as we go forward? So of course I showed you the GFS ensemble. It's not really showing anything in terms of strong region redeveloping really towards the end of this month or anything. It looks like uh, I wanna show you what the latest run of the GFS is indicating for the upcoming weekend. So of course, Alex Deacon in yesterday's deep dive talked a little bit more about the dynamics of the jet stream, acceleration and deceleration of the winds aloft allows piling up of the air, et cetera, et cetera. We've got one branch of the jet stream coming down from a northwesterly direction, thanks to that building area of high pressure over the North Atlantic. So you've got that flood situation over the Northeastern United States, troughiness uh, in this part of the world. Then we've got the big ridge, the jet stream is forced all the way up into Greenland, hence why we've seen 23 Celsius in coastal areas of Greenland over the last few days. Then that jet comes south again, and of course, as that jet comes south, we see all that air start to pile up around and over the British Isles. But we've also got one arm of the jet coming in from a kind of west to southwest direction, as well as the northwest. And as these two jet streaks meet, 
it then forces a braiding ground for the, the, the development of low pressure. And that is exactly what we're seeing. So, of course, this is Thursday at, the, at 600, so tomorrow morning. What we've got is we've got that system that over the last few days brought plenty of heavy rainfall. That's now out of the way. Now we're keeping our eyes fixed on this feature here that is uh, between the Azores and, well, southwest of Ireland, but it's actually closer to the Azores than it is Ireland. But if you pay close attention to what's happening, we've got air coming in at 30 to 40,000 feet from the northwest. We've also got this jet stream that, uh, coming in from a west to southwesterly direction. And then that allows the development of, of, uh, of two areas of low pressure, one just to the north and northwest of this feature here. This is the more prominent feature, as you can see here, by the, the latter half of Thursday. And then as we play through the loop, what happens is that feature to the north then uh, you know, kind of joins forces with this area of low pressure to the south. And as it does so, we're seeing the convergence of this air forcing the air to rise and then deepen that center of low pressure. And of course, it becomes a bit of a dartboard, uh, you know, on the synoptic chart that is uh, as we press from Friday and into the weekend here. As this does so, it's drawn energy from that surrounding warm waters beneath. Though it's not a tropical feature, but certainly that warm water is, is having an impact on not only deepening it, but also, of course, the dynamics aloft is coming together as well. Now, we've seen uh, similar areas of low pressure develop during July of 2012 and 2015 also. And I think this July is quite similar, not as extreme, but somewhat similar to 2015. That was also an El Nino year, 2012 was a developing El Nino year as well. That is why, why I thought we would see um, a similar July to 2012 and also 2015. 2012 was a much cooler and much wetter July than this year, of course. The reason why we're not seeing below average temperatures, folks, I believe anyway, is the fact that the water temperatures are skewing the air temperature. So basically that warm water like I say, enhancing the humidity levels within the atmosphere. Therefore, the temperatures are simply warmer than they would be back in 2015 and 2012. We've got a very different sea surface temperature profile this year versus those years. And that is why I had a hard time uh, determining where the temperature would go. I believe that we would have a, a wetter July, but I didn't know where the temperature would go with regards to this July despite having low pressure and control. So you can see here, as I continue to play through this loop slowly, the pressure continues to drop within that center of low pressure, thanks to the dynamics aloft, of course, and the coming together of, uh, of jet stream winds from different directions. And of course, you've got all sorts of other dynamics taking place. But of course, you've got this spiral area of low pressure we can have unseasonably strong winds very heavy rainfall, thunderstorms embedded, cycling around that center of low pressure. We may even see the development of some funnel clouds and tornadoes. That is possible with this type of situation as well here. So we'll need to monitor this situation very carefully as we go through the weekend. Very messy weather picture for this, this upcoming weekend indeed. As you can see here, now that this in, uh, according to the GFS, sees that system move up towards the Norwegian Sea. We're left with fresh air coming in from a northerly direction as you can see does that mean that we're uh, done with the unsettled conditions no not at all because we've got another feature coming in off the atlantic here we're keeping our eyes uh, to the west of the azores we've got features here that may have some tropical properties that develop we need to watch them as well as we progress through the second half of july august even september as well with these very warm sea surface temperatures you get the development of the tropics and of course, recurving cyclones towards the UK pattern can deliver both hot, dry conditions, but it can also enhance low pressure in the pattern as well. And as you can see here towards next Wednesday, we've got another system deepening, moving towards the UK. We're locked in this trough at this moment in time, folks, and it looks as if it's not wanting to disappear anytime soon. These areas of low pressure with that trough extension into Scandinavia, you notice here these systems then move uh, you know, near or 
over the British Isles and head to 